As we get ready to enter our worship time, I would like to read from the Old Testament, from the book of Judges. And I found this the other day while I was looking through some scriptures, and it's kind of lead us into using your gifts as God gives them to you. And we all have those gifts. And so I want to read, and this was back in a long, long time ago, 4,000 years ago, that this lady existed. But listen to the words from Judges 4, and I'm going to read from 1 through 7. The Israelites, again, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Enod died. Well, he was the, he was the king. He died. But, so they did evil. And, again, it seems like it's never ending. It's still going on today. So evil is going. So anyway, so the Lord sold him into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in, and I can't even pronounce this, it's Heroset Ha Golim. Trust me, these words I couldn't even try if I had, even if I was a scholar, I couldn't do it. But just know that because of their sin, God let them be captured and fall into the hands of their enemy. That's things that happen to us when we let we sin and we let our enemy win. But then Israel cried out to the Lord. Now this is the great part of it. They cried out to the Lord for help. He had 900 chariots of iron and he oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. That was their punishment for sin. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of, now again, I can't pronounce this very well, but Black Piddoth, was judging Israel. She was a judge. She was a prophet, but a judge. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She was a judge, like we have today. They came to her, she made judgments, because you'll see why in a minute, I'll read it to you. She used to sit under the palm tree, and so that, and she did all the judgments. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abiam from Kadesh, and Nathot told him, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take position in Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Nephita and the tribe of Zebulon. And this is what how God got them out of their sin and, and their judgment. He, was, he never turned away from his people. God stayed connected. How powerful is that? Even in our sin, God's still there. And then connected to it. I will draw out Sisera, the generals of Teben's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Deborah, who was a prophet, told them, Do what the Lord tells you. Take your troops, go to this area of Mount Tabor, and he will give your enemies into your hand. In other words, they were not going to be tied up anymore. They were not going to be under judgment anymore. God freed them. And Deborah told them, don't do this. And they listened. Sometimes I think we need to listen to what God is telling us and what we need to do. God is always there with us. That's a joy that we can share together. Last week in our messages here, we talked about the joy of God. Where is your joy? Well, today we're going to talk about sharing the joy. Deborah had Amazing. And in the scriptures, underneath some of the, the uh, uh, writings, it says this, Deborah was confident in God's work, so she knew God's work. She God did God's will, she worked for God, and she did God's way. She listened to God without a doubt. And God blessed her with her gifts, and she used those gifts for the good of the people and for God. That's what God asks us to do today. Use the gifts that we have for the glory of God. And let me tell you, when you do that, the end result is amazing. You will, it will just amaze you how that comes about. So in our, as we begin our worship, let us think about that. Think about the awesomeness of God and how he has blessed us and given us a, a church and a church family. So let us move forward on that this morning as we come together. Let us pray together. Our Father God, we thank you so much for allowing us to come together. Thank you for being able to be here in fellowship with one another. 
to laugh and to sing and to joy and, and be in, in, in wonderful uh, togetherness to be able to worship you and uplift your holy name. Help us to give you the praise this morning. As Bill started out, you know, this is his world. And we know, God, that you are in total control of everything today. And you're never going to change. And we thank you, God, for that. Open our hearts and minds this morning. Let us feel that wonderful Holy Spirit that is dwelling in, among us and in this church. And that we thank you for being with us today as we get ready now to light our Christ candle. And uh, Pastor Kathleen, do you have one of our young ones that are ready to do something like that? Would you, maybe one of our young ones would like to do it? Would anyone like to come up and light the candle? One of our young people, we'd love to have you do it. Jump, jump. All right, come on. Let us stand for the welcoming of the presence of Jesus here this morning. And if you're able, continue to stand for the music. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, let us sing with our two first song. We're going to sing How Great Thou Art, which is a wonderful song. And thank you, Lord, for all our blessings. So, praise thee, lead us.
And when we have no answers, Lord, we know that answers are coming and they are being worked out according to what's best for each one. Oh, Father, we come, Lord, with a gratitude, Lord, of gratefulness, Lord, for everything that is given to us, Lord. We thank you for the healing that is being given here to all of us, Lord, in ways that words cannot always express. But we thank you, Father, for the words that were shared here from Sister Gail today. We thank you, Father, for clearing the path, Lord, of the steps ahead, Lord, that you're God in her to take, Lord, in order to serve you and to serve others, Lord, with the gifts that she has. We thank you, Father, for that. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the, the, the newness, Father, that is coming to our path, Lord, with others, Lord, that are seeking you, Father, and desiring, Father, to drink from the living waters, Lord. We thank you, Father, for them. Lord, we lift this community up, Lord, as we go into the days ahead, Father. We ask, Lord, that this light that you give us will shine bright on this hill, Lord, and will reflect hope, Lord, in the days ahead for all of them to see. Oh, Lord, we lift up all of those that are out there in the leadership role, Lord. We lift up those that are here, Father, in this community of believers, Lord, as we come together and ask, Father, that the gifts that have been given, the talents that have been given, Father, that it will be moved, Father, into serving you, Lord, and serving your church. So, Father, we just praise you and thank you for all things. And in your Son's name, we give it to you, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I find it just amazing as Pastor Bob shared his scripture reading this morning um, about when we cry out to the Father and seek his discernment and we talked a little bit about that in Sunday school today. Uh, it's just beautiful to know that when we cry out to Father God, no matter where we are, what despair we're in, God is always listening to us. And He will always come to our defense and always will provide for our needs. He's there for us in time of trouble. So it's just such a peace that we have to know that Father God is listening to us no matter what we're asking for. He's going to give us the best. And a lot of times that does not always come when we cry out to relieve us from anything at that time instantly. But we do know that we can trust Father that He will clear the way. We just need to be still and know that He's God and know to be patient because He is coming. So as my heart was moved to share from Psalms this morning, it is Psalms 34. This is where David cries out in a time of darkness. So it's Psalms 34, 1 through 9. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved me out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. This is the word that we are given. We come to a time that we offer and give back to the Lord. So at this time we uh, come and we are sharing our, our gifts and our tithes. And we, as we share, there is a jar placed in the back of the the church. So if you feel moved to, we welcome that to be given to the Father. And we have also, if you choose to mail it in, there is a mailing address that is PO Box 17, New Hope, Virginia 24469. Let us pray. 
Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the openness, Lord, that we are able to come, Lord, and to be able to give, Father, to give back what you give, Lord. It all comes from you, Lord. We thank you, Father, to be able to be moved into that place, Lord, of movement of our hearts to give fully, Lord, and not out, not out of a have to. It's a movement, Lord, that is from you, Father, for the love we have, Lord, and the appreciation and the gratefulness, Lord, of being able to serve you, Lord, in this way. So, Father, as we give these gifts, Father, we ask, Lord, for your anointing to be uh, given, Lord, to be able to, to be used, Lord, according to how your will is, Lord, to help others and to help the continuing ministry of this church. And, Father, we just praise you and we thank you, Father for all that is given through the gifts and the talents of each one. So we give it to you, Father, in praise. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Last week I mentioned about how we uh, have a joy that, uh, where, the joy, where did it come from and what our joy is, and we understand that if all our joy comes from the Lord above, and He shares His joy with us, and we share it with others. Today I want to talk about a little bit about sharing that joy that we receive. Now the joy that we have comes spiritually from God. It tells us without a doubt that our joy doesn't come from being here on earth. Now we do have joyful moments, like this morning. I think this is a great joy what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful time to get together, share each other, share our word of the Lord, share God, share our, uh, our joys and concerns. This is a wonderful time. But our real joy, and I talk about real joy, it has to do with spiritual joy. It has to do with the fact is that one day, is coming a day that we will always feel joy. It's a joy that comes from knowing Jesus Christ and that our joy is eternal. It's forever. It doesn't stop here. You say, well, gee, Bob, uh, we die. Yes, physically, we do. If you remember the thief on the cross, he died. What Jesus said, and these words ring true to me today, and they ring so loud and clear to us. Today, even in your death, Jesus looked at him with love, and he said, you will be with me. He didn't say tomorrow, he didn't say next year, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. You will be with me in heaven, where I sit next to the Father. What a joy that is. You and I will do the same if you believe in Jesus Christ. Don't be fooled by people saying you can work your way there, you can get there by money, you can get there by giving, you can get there any other way. There's no way to get to heaven but through Jesus Christ our Lord. He died on the cross for that. He died for sin, yours and mine. And because of that, we have a joy that we can share. We can share it. Now, I want to share some words from Zephaniah. It's in the Old Testament. And it says, Be silent before the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is at hand, and the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his gift. The day of the Lord means it's the day coming of God's judgment upon this earth. It's coming. I don't know when. I wasn't told that. But it does give us ideas through Scripture. The Scripture is filled with telling us that it's coming and how it's going to come and Possibly that around the time it might come. But there is, there is no way we know. God just said it's coming. But at the time I will search Jerusalem with lamps and I will punish the people who rest completely, complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good nor will he do harm. And he's saying, well, you know, Jerusalem, and that's pertaining to us as well. We don't, we don't care about God much anymore, it seems. Like our country has just said, we don't need you, God. And so God said, okay, I'll step back. And so he has, except for those who sit in his pews today. Those who usually are connected to Jesus. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. This is what's coming. I want you to hear this because I want you to understand something about the sharing of joy. And you'll find out just in a little bit what that is. The warrior cries aloud in there. And that day will be a day of wrath. A day of distress and anguish. A day of ruin and devastation. A day of darkness and gloom. And a day of clouds and thick darkness. You say, T-Bob, why are you reading this to me? I don't want to go through that. Well, that's wrath of God coming to punish sinners. To punish those who have turned away from Him. And that's coming. I will bring distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them. Understand what this is saying. Nothing can get you to be saved except one way. And we'll talk about that. But you can't get there by silver, gold, works, or any other way. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. There's a day coming in, this, in the future that is going to take away all the sin. And it's consumed it all. God is coming. And when he comes, he's going to come in the wrath that he wants to destroy what is evil. And I am so happy to say that. 
There's a day coming that God is going to take evil away from us. We won't have to worry about being sick. We won't have to worry about COVID. We won't have to worry about cancer. We won't have to worry about sin any longer. That day is coming. And you will live in that day and you will not ever have to be worried about that again. But in the meantime, we still live on this earth and can be affected by everything that's here. But the joy of that is you're connected. Remember this morning, God never moved. Right, children? They never moved. We moved. But if you stay connected to God, He will never disconnect from you. Ever. He loves you. He cares about you. So you've heard that. I've shared that with you, and I wanted to do that today. I also want to share with you from Thessalonians because this is when we start getting excited about the future. We start getting excited about what's coming. Even though this is coming, we still live on this earth. We still can. I understand a joy, if I may. William, you? you had a joy Saturday, right? What was it? He caught a what? What kind of big fish? Yeah, you went fishing, right? And you caught a a brook trout. How Bob? He was in your boat, right, Bob? Yeah, I understand your boat was caught that fish. How? What was it? What kind of fish was it? A what? Seventeen inches long. A what? A trout? How big was it? Two and a half pounds? Three pounds? You know? 17 inches long, two and a half pounds, brook wow. trout. Wow. And that's a, is that a, a citation. citation. Was that a joy for you to catch that? No. Well, see, you can, we can still enjoy. Is fishing fun? Simon, you were there when you had fun? Yeah. Bob, you were there and you had fun? I had it, Bob. <laughs> Why? You see, God doesn't take joy away from us on earth. I didn't catch anything, but I had joyful day being with good people. I cannot believe you didn't catch anything. Uh, you, I can't believe you didn't catch anything. Well, I let them do it. Oh, <laughs> <I sleep. laughs> oh yeah, you caught a little one in the same one. <laughs> but you see, God doesn't take our joy away. But the joy we have on this earth is just temporary. And the, the trials we have are temporary. And they, they come, and they go. But God's telling us, hey, He's coming. He's going to take all us away, but he's got, he, His wrath is coming to destroy who, though? You? Me? Listen. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. And this has come First Thessalonians in chapter 5. This is Scripture, folks. This is not Bible. I'm reading scripture from this Bible right here. And that's the way I do things. I read it from God's Word. It says, when they say that peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them. As labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. See, there's coming a time when we think it's going to be just great. We're going to move forward. Everything looks great. God's saying, uh-huh. There's too much sin in the world. I'm going to come back. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. Hear what this says. For that day to surprise you like a thief. You see, you're not in darkness. Why? You see, it, it, Jesus will come like a thief in the night. Only to the ones who are in the darkness. You say, what's that mean, Pastor? Well, what's that mean? It means this. If you're in the darkness, it means you're not connected to Jesus Christ and you're not saved. You don't believe in Jesus. Or if you do, you haven't given your life to him yet. And you're in the darkness. And that darkness, and you haven't given your life to God, or you've rejected Christ, or you've pushed Him away. That's not what this says. It says, for you all are children of the light. Everyone in this church, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are children of the light. And so you're not in darkness, and if you're not in darkness, guess what? You don't have to face the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not for Christian people who believe in Jesus. It is for those who are sinners, those who remain in sin, those who reject Jesus, those who turn away from, from Him and from God. The good news here 
is the fact that your joy should come from that. It comes from the, from the Bible itself. That God is sharing this with us. For those who sleep at night and those who get drunk at day and night, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on a breastplate of faith. Now, I don't have a breastplate. I looked for one. I found something like this, but it didn't work. This isn't really a breastplate, but a breastplate is a protection. And I hold this up and I fight something. If somebody threw something at me, I can duck and, and fight. But this is kind of the best breastplate I can find. I don't know how to make one very good. I'm sure there's some people out here that are talented. Maybe you could make one. If you'd like to make one for me for next week, I'd appreciate it. But you know what? It's, it blocks sin. It says, that he put on the armor of God. And I showed that last week, and I had my little, my little sword. Right? The sword, the spirit. It's not a fighting sword. It's the spirit. God's sword is the spirit, the word of God. This is what's the sword is, not this. We don't fight with this. We, we use that. We use God's Word. And how powerful that is for us. That's awesome. And what we have here, it says, For God has destined us not for wrath. Ooh. Ah, thank you, Lord. If you want to joy, not for wrath, but obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, having said all of that, you are not destined for God's wrath, then you have a joy. Now, what are you going to do with that joy? Well, there's a short story in Matthew that talks about that God has given each of you gifts. Everyone in this church, from two years to 80. <laughs> 85. Uh, that, that was Rose said that. I didn't say it. <laughs> I'll claim it. <laughs> yeah. You see, the joy for everybody, you all have gifts. You, you saw it this morning with these little ones here. How they spoke up and how they said things and how they talked and how they shared together. Every one of us has a gift here. So what are you going to do with it? See, God gives us a gift. So here's this little, uh, in Matthew 25 it says, uh, the rich man, he left. He said he's going on a journey, so he summons his slaves and he entrusted his property to them. And so he gave one many gifts. He gave the other a few gifts. And he gave one just one gift. Now listen to what it says. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two, two talents. The one who had five, he made five more. He shared his gifts that God gave to him with others. And because of that, when the, when the master came back, he gave them five more. He doubled it. You see, when you share your gifts with others, when you share yourself about God and you're willing to let God be in your life, and you share it, trust me, He'll give you more. It's not prosperity, folks. This is not a prosperity plea here. It's not about money. It's about sharing, and the more you share, the more you get. The one thing that I have found that when you go out and open the door for somebody, and it happened the other day when we were out for breakfast. Somebody opened the door for us. I guess they thought we were a little bit older than normal, and so they just opened the door and said, hey, come on in, I'll hold the door for you. We said, thank you. Well, when we, then we held the door for somebody else, and they said, thank you. It gets contagious. The more you serve, the more you give, the more you share your gifts with God, they see God in you. Amen. Are the people seeing God in you? Really? Do they see Him? When you go to trailer, do they see God in you, God? Do they see it? Because why? Because you're connected to God. When you go to work, do they see God in you? Are they looking at you and seeing who God really is? Because you're the one who shows whether or not you're God or not. Whether God belongs to you. It's what you do and how you do it. When you work, do you work with, with honesty, integrity? You see, it makes a difference. So, see, God bless those folks who, who use their talents. And in Matthew 25, it tells us that wonderful parable. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and seven counts with them. Then one who received five talents came forward, bringing five more, and said, Master, you handed me five. See, I've made five more. His master said, Well done. Listen to these words. This is God talking to you and me when we share. Well done, good and trustworthy person. 
Well done. Isn't it amazing when you do something good for somebody and it feels good? But God sees it too. When you do it to the least of these, thy brethren, you do it to who? You do it to me. God's saying when you do something good for someone else, you're doing it to God as well. He sees everything you do. It's amazing, but it's an awesome thing. And so I put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The joy of the wonderment of, of knowing that one day you will have a place in heaven. And that's coming. The one with the two talents came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents, and I made two more. And he said, Well done, that good and faithful person. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I put you in charge of many. He gave you back more than you could imagine. Does, this, does any of this pertain to your home life? You think? Does it pertain to your husband, wife, friend, family, kids? Does it pertain to the church? When you do unto others in the church? Does it pertain to... Where does this pertain to? Everywhere you go. It's every place that you and I travel to. It's every place that we're part of. When I do something for Gail, God sees it. Even though you don't see it, God sees it. When Gail does something good for me, makes me a nice dish, or makes my favorite, and says, oh, I think I'll make Bob his favorite dish, and she does it, God sees that. It's coming from where? Right here. The heart. That's where God looks at. He looks at your heart today. Where is your heart today? Are you willing to share your joy that you now know that you don't have to be a part of the wrath of God? I don't know about you, but that makes me joyful. When we get into the Thanksgiving service and we're getting into the time of, of this wonderful time of Thanksgiving and Christmas and looking forward to Advent and our time together uh, uplifting Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you something. It's awesome when you think about this. It, it moves us to a, a new direction. It should move us into a way to make us happy. And that, that doesn't even include what, what we just had this morning. Joy together. Then it said, then he went to the one who received the one talent. Now this is important to understand when we look at this. Because he gave the man one talent, just one, but he, what did the man do? Well, he took it and buried it. He didn't use it at all. He never used any of his talent. He said, no. He said, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. Meaning, oh, you were harsh. He thought God was harsh. And the master was harsh, but he wasn't. He was loving, caring. But maybe God is testing us today and saying, no. Some people really do think that God is a taskmaster, saying don't do this and don't do that. The only reason he tells us don't do something is because it's bad for us. It's not a good thing. That's all. God never tells us to not do something. He tells us not to do something that's bad. And I think it's wonderful. God gives us those things through Scripture of what's good and bad. But here this, this man said, I, I buried it. I'm not using my gifts at all. And so the master said, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. He should have done something. And he would have made interest. At least something. So if you, you say, well, Bob, well, I don't have any talents. Uh, I don't agree. If you said to me today, and I asked you if you had a talent, you'd say, nah, I don't have a talent. I know some of you have lots of good talent. Cooking. Some of you are great cooks. We've had many a meal back here. Some of you like to lead. Some of you like to sing. Some of you like to be present. Some, I remember a little Murdy. One of her gifts was smiling at everybody. She could even walk in the back door and the first thing she'd do is look at you and smile at you and get, ooh, thank you, I needed that. <laughs> Joyful. Hospitality, we need. We need people to be workers in the fields. God is asking us. So use the talents that we have. Don't put them away because if you don't, this is what happens. We lose them. 
that I should have invested with money in the bankers and on my return I would receive what was my own with interest. So take the town from him. He took it away and then he, he said, and gave it to the one with the ten. And for all those who have, more will be given than those who have abundance. But those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. If you do not use your talents, God will take it away from you. And then he says, as for you worthless slaves, Throw him into the outer darkness with his weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, those who are want to be truly connected to God and truly know God, it's not about how much you get, it's how much you give. How much are you willing to share? Do it at home with each other. This pertains to your family life. This pertains to your church life, to your work life. Everywhere you go, this is part of why you should be enjoyed. Because of the fact, first of all, you don't have wrath, and you're not going to face it. You face heaven. That's where you're going. What a joy that is. Use your talents today. Whatever it takes. It's an awesome thing. I remember, and I'll close with this as I about a little story about a lady who used her gifts. And I think I might have shared this with you once before, but I need to, I want to share it again because it really meant a lot to me. When I was a chaplain at one of the homes in Harrisonburg, I did a Bible study. And that Bible study, I, we brought in the residents and they came and we studied and talked about God. And one day I had to leave. I had a full-time job. I went to a full-time church. I left that ministry. But I didn't know that because of sharing, the, the gift that I have is to teach and to share, that that gift was being listened to by some lady in a room with a door open about this one. And she said, I listened to you every time you came. And I heard what you said, and you talked about God. And she said, when you left, it moved me to do the very thing that you were going to do. I took up the banner. I took my gift because of what you said about the God and used it to teach that plan. You see, we don't know who we affect by what we do. Every time we do something, you don't know who it's going to affect. Every time you, good or bad, it affects somebody. So, use the talents, share the joy that you have received from God above. Eternal life, which is yours. Don't have to face the wrath. Okay, that's the second one. And then share the gifts that you have, because when you do, God returns them flowing over. And you'll find out when you connect to God, life is exciting. Is it not, Miss Caleb? Have you found our life exciting? Something new and different. <laughs> <laughs> she just don't want to say the things she really says. What she says. <laughs> Honestly, folks, what an awesome message that God laid upon us this week about just sharing the joy. So that's what you do this week, okay? Share the joy with each other. It's amazing what it does for us. Share it with family, friends, church, and wherever you meet. And share it because Jesus Christ has given you the greatest gift of all your life everlasting. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, and whoever believes in Him shall not have but have everlasting life. Isn't that amazing? What a gift. Share it. Amen? Amen. Well, as we get ready to close our worship, The last song will be just as I am. Is there anyone that would like to share something before we leave? Again, to our guest, it's so nice to have you with us. We hope you'll come back and be with us and enjoy us. Because we enjoy you. Don't forget next week, our youth will have a table bar. Invite others. We have two young ladies. One, Angel, brings her friend. Jojo. Like, Jojo. Jojo. Jojo brings his friends. Mm -hmm. Invite somebody for next week. They are sharing the joy. They are sharing the joy. Invite somebody. 
Our church is in the room for Jesus Christ, period. It's not about government. It's not about anything else. It's about Jesus. And that's where we're going to go the best way we know how. So let's do that. And don't forget the things we have going on. I almost went yesterday to the trail life thing. I had it all set. And I was going to go get me some chili. And I looked at the time and the day and said, <laughs> guess what? One of the joys I don't have is remembering it. I can't do it anymore. So what happened was I put it in my calendar for next Saturday. I almost showed up yesterday for nothing. But that would have been okay. You would have had part of it. All right, let's stand and say our clothes again. Amen. Go now in this piece.